Born at a time young boys were ordered to be slaughtered alive, his mother had feared that he too would most surely never survive. Yet by an intervention which was nothing short of divine, Allah inspired his mother to place her newborn into the Nile. So with her trust in Allah, she graciously complied, casting him into the river as his sister followed alongside. Watching him closely, she was soon taken by surprise when Musa floated right into the home of the most wicked of all, the most despised. The home of Fir'aun, the ruler of Egypt who was committing the most despicable of crimes. It seemed like certain death, yet in fact it was a miracle in disguise. For Musa is lovingly picked up by Fir'aun's wife and soon becomes the apple of her eyes. As such, he finds himself safe and secure within the home of the worst of mankind. Musa lived on to become a nobleman in Egypt, known to be upright, a man of justice, wisdom, and of course, incredible might. Yet all was to change one day when he finds himself in the middle of a fight between an Egyptian man and one of his own, an Israelite. Attempting to reconcile the two, he delivers a mistaken strike, which unfortunately causes the Egyptian to die. It was an accident, of course, yet it tore him up inside. O oh Lord, I have wronged myself, so forgive me, he cried. But by the following day, word had spread that Musa had killed a man and he would soon be tried. A man came to him running. They're going to put you to death. You must escape. He sincerely advised. So Musa fled the land of Egypt in search of a safe place to hide. And for eight nights he traveled until he finally arrived at the water wells of Madian. But by now he was extremely tired. In a state of fatigue, he sought rest under a tree until he noticed two women who were desperately in need. He quickly offered his help and assisted to water their sheep before he sat back down in the shade, praying, O oh Lord, I'm in need of whatever good you bestow upon me. At this point, the woman returned and advised him to meet with their father. He asked Musa if he's willing to work on his farm and look after his pasture. In return, he would wed one of his daughters for him to have as a partner. Musa accepted the offer and worked for 10 years thereafter. But upon completing the term, he decided it was time to make his departure. Heading for home, he travels with his family long into the night. But as he nears Mount Tour, he notices a fire beaming bright. Approaching it cautiously, he draws nearer to the light until he hears a call, which will forever change the course of his life. O oh Musa, I am your Lord. There is no Lord but I. The sound left Musa shaken, trembling in awe. He had just received revelation from Allah, the one true Lord, like Ibrahim, Ishaq, Yaqub, and all the messengers before. It is then Allah commands him to cast his staff to the floor. It suddenly turns into a frightening serpent, only then to be restored. A shining light then emerges from his hand, another sign once more, miraculous signs to assist him upon the mission he was to be called. Go to Fir'aun, for indeed he has transgressed. Call him to worship God alone, without making partners instead, and command him to free the children of Israel, relieve their distress. O oh Lord, ease my task, widen my chest, and make firm my speech, Musa humbly requests, and allow my brother Harun to accompany me. Allah accepts, and thus they go forth, beginning to make their way. I am with you both, Allah states, so don't be afraid. They then go on to meet with Fir'aun, who swiftly responds in dismay. Did I not raise you in my home and give you a place to stay? And weren't you the one who killed a man and then ran away? And yet here you are. Is this what you have to say? Who is this so-called Lord of yours? Anyway, Lord of the East, West and all in between, if only you'd understand. 
I know no Lord but I. Why not bring some proof if you can? So Musa's staff turns into a serpent and a bright light shines from his hands. You are nothing but a madman who wishes to drive us out of our land. This is nothing but magic and I will surely destroy your plan. And so a showdown is called and the best of magicians are summoned to attend. Pharaoh promises a reward if they win, assuring they'd become a close friend. So they cast their sticks, which begin to wriggle and bend. But before the staff of Musa, they had no chance to contend. It turned into a gigantic serpent, and that was the end. The magicians fall into prostration, humbly admitting defeat. We believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa, they begin to repeat. Pharaoh reacts in anger. Responding in conceit, this man is nothing more than your chief. I will crucify you all and cut off your hands and feet. Then you shall surely know there is no Lord more powerful than me. Things went downhill for Fir'aun. Following this loss, he had been publicly disgraced and now his power was on the rocks. Feeling insecure, he increases the severity of his plots, further tormenting the children of Israel while Musa would watch. Musa warned him of Allah's punishment, yet Pharaoh heeded not. So Allah sent a devastating drought, destroying all of Egypt's crops. And then came in the floods, the locusts, the lice, and the frogs, sign after sign, yet Pharaoh refused to stop. After some time passes, Allah permits Musa to finally leave. So he gathers the children of Israel and heads towards the Red Sea. Yet upon realizing their escape, Pharaoh refuses to let them flee. He dispatches an army and chases after them with speed. As he has them surrounded, the children of Israel slowly lose patience. They cry, surely we are doomed, we are soon to be overtaken. Musa replies, my Lord is with me and I will not be forsaken. He strikes the sea with his staff causing its miraculous separation into two towering mountains, making way for their evacuation. Blinded by pride, Pharaoh follows them in pursuit, failing to realize that for him, the sea would no longer split in two. And as such, Pharaoh drowns miserably along with the rest of his crew. Today his body remains on display for the whole world to view leaving his story a permanent lesson for all those who come after you.